Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is a reading from Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it. He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands. Nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far away from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, even as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring." Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is a reading from 1 Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that, when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in the prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are close to those who are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them 
and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel today reads a little bit like of the prelude to the day of Pentecost, which is in two weeks. Jesus tells the disciples that they will not be alone and that the Father will be sending them an advocate. The rest of the world, all of the people that they are going to encounter, will not have this advocate working on their behalf, but the followers of Jesus will. That's a good thing given what Peter, or the author who is writing in his name, is telling the churches today in Pontus and Galatia and Cappadocia and Asia and Bithynia in the second reading. These are people who, it appears, were once accepted as members of their communities, but they since have been cast out. They're not being persecuted by or suffering at the hands of the state, but rather it looks like their suffering is caused by the actions of their fellow citizens who do not understand and reject what the churches in those communities believed. So by the time that this letter was written, which is around the year 90 AD, the first Christians had been, or they were in the process of being cast out of the synagogues. Their problems and persecutions were undeserved, and they were done at the hands of their neighbors who were probably ridiculing them and ostracizing them, and just generally making their lives in the community miserable because they were followers of Jesus. The author knows this, and encourages them not to give up or to give in. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, he says. Rather, stand firm in what you believe and defend it, but doing so gently, because you have nothing to be ashamed of. You don't deserve what is happening to you, but it's happening, so you need to recognize that you are hurting, and that hurt and that suffering are part of what it means to be a follower of Jesus in that time and in those places. Suffering will happen, so it is better that it happens to you for doing good, for following Jesus, than for doing something nefarious. After all, Jesus also suffered despite his own innocence. So remain faithful to him. Following in his steps mean that you may also be just unjustly accused or deliberately misunderstood and endure suffering as a result. But sharing in Jesus' suffering also means sharing in his resurrection. I think that we can hear these readings and think that those times that we hear about are so long ago and so different from what we experience today. And generally, that is the, the case. These churches that Peter is writing to, really, they don't exist anymore, and they haven't existed for a long time. When we think of the church and its members being persecuted and suffering, what usually comes to mind are the later state-sponsored persecutions by imperial authorities against Christian believers. We think of the era of the martyrs and all of those stories that go along with them. That does not look to be the case here in these particular towns. I do see parallels, though, between that time and ours. There is a lot of talk out there on clergy social media, which I really do not commend to any of you, but one of those things that I need to be aware of. But there's talk and and writing about how the church in general is being persecuted. But I wonder, though, if what we're actually seeing is that the church is losing its influence in society, that it's losing its position of power and authority that it once took for granted. Because for some people, that can look a lot like persecution. The church, as an institution, no longer commands the automatic deference that it has long enjoyed. And this is not really the doing of government, but maybe more so of soccer leagues 
or hockey travel teams or any one of a number of things that people can find to occupy their times. Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings are no longer the times set apart that they used to be. And I've also heard some Christian leaders state that they want to return the church to the way it was in the earliest days. And maybe we're actually heading in that direction. I don't think that most of us will face ostracism for being church members, but maybe what we'll find is indifference and misunderstanding of who we are and what we believe. We can no longer assume that everyone in attendance at funerals and weddings will know the Our Father. And we resemble that early church in that what we do and how we pray can seem strange and unintelligible. And therefore, people may look down on us or think that we're misguided or just have no idea of what we believe and no interest at all in finding out. This letter offers guidance on how to respond, gently and respectfully with reverence. There is still good news to share and we do not need to be ashamed of it. Nor should we be afraid to live out the gospel and to follow the commandments of Jesus, just as the author of this letter from Peter was telling these churches. That is good work. It is not the easiest of work, especially when ridicule or indifference out there in the world may lead to suffering of some sort on our part. But we are still called to do it, and we still do it. And as we will hear in the weeks to come, we also still have an advocate to guide us. Amen. Please stand. And let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We begin our prayers with our parish prayer list. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Matt, our bishop provisional, and Mike, our rector. Pray for our parish families, especially Jane, John, and Carol, Andrew, Michelle, William, and Kate, Stephen, Sandra, David, and Rosemary Elson, and Jacob. Pray for those celebrating birthdays, especially Austin and Justin. Judson, sorry. Pray for healing and comfort, especially for Amy, Anne, Anne, Barbara, Burley, Callum, Chris, Cole, Dave, Dick, Ed, Joe, Julie, Kelly, Marion, Mary, Mariah, Nathaniel, Pat, Phyllis, Richard, Sabrina, Shelley, and Vivian. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of West Africa. And in the Eau Claire cycle, we pray for compassionate ecumenism in northwestern Wisconsin. Following your bulletin, 
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Uh. You will recognize the words of the, of the gospel in the anthem that we sing today, and you will hear many, 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 many times, if ye love me, if ye love me, if ye love me, keep my commandments. And also, I will pray the Father and he gives another comforter that he may abide with you, even the spirit of truth. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So a couple of other announcements. I am going to be gone and out of town next week. So Father Nick Mezzacapa is coming over from Rochester. He will have both of the services. Also, just something to put on your calendars and to keep in mind is on June 4th, that's the first Sunday of June, we've been invited to a tri-parish picnic. So that would be um, Christ Church, St. John's, Sparta, and St. Mary's in Toma. Um, St. John's is going to be hosting a picnic in their backyard, weather permitting, otherwise I think it might be in their fellowship hall. But that's at 1 o'clock on June 4th. So more information to come on that as like what we should bring, what kind of food, is it, what type of potluck it will be. Is there anybody here um, celebrating a birthday or anniversary or anybody traveling? Well, today is Mother's Day, so I'm going to ask anyone who is a mother or grandmother, aunt, godmother, stepmother, if you've served as a mother in any sort of capacity, please stand. And we have a, a prayer and a blessing for mothers. Good and gentle God, we pray in gratitude for our mothers and for all women who have joined with you in the wonder of bringing forth new life. You who became human through a woman, grant to all mothers the courage they need to face the uncertain future that life with children always brings. Give them the strength to live and to be loved in return, not perfectly, but humanly. Give them the faithful support of partners, husbands, family, and friends as they care for the physical and spiritual growth of their children. Give them joy and delight in their children to sustain them through the, tri the trials of motherhood. Most of all, give them the wisdom to turn to you for help when they need it most. Amen. And one final thing, we do have one person who is graduating, 
this afternoon. So I'm going to ask Molly to come forward. We have a, a prayer and a little gift for you as you graduate from UW Lacrosse. Gracious and caring God, our source of light, we ask for your almighty hand to be upon this graduate as we send her forward. With her classes and grading now complete, may she strive towards excellent, excellence in all she does. With the applause quieted, may she celebrate and lift up those around her. With the speeches concluded, may her voice rise up to pronounce peace and justice in the world. With the fanfare ceasing, may she find bliss in future endeavors and adventures. With degrees and credentials in hand, may her achievements grow and enrich her community. May she discover holiness in the midst of life's blessings as well as life's challenges. As her career commences, may she conduct her life's work with exceptional skill and integrity, inspired to go forth and set the world on fire from this day onward. Amen. Congratulations. So, Nate, are you, are you grad, when do you actually graduate? I know it's this, is it this weekend as well? It is this weekend. Huh? Okay. The 26th. All right, we'll have something special for you on that day then. Because Nate is graduating from Logan, right? Central. Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, 
In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.